these folks and you pray for them. I want you to turn your Bibles this morning to the book of Isaiah chapter 14. Don't forget what I preached on last Sunday night. How to behave in the house of God and how to listen. You see a lot of weird things going on when you're a preacher and look back over the congregation. You can almost see demons working in people. The other night I was preaching I guess about Wednesday night or Thursday night and there's this big old boy standing here Listen real carefully now. There's big old boys down there that look like they were teenage boys. Had on big old jackets from school. There was a girl sat right between these two boys. And if I've ever saw the devil work through a young girl, he's working through her the other night. A teenage girl. And this boy's trying to listen. He's listening to messages like that, and God was getting a hold of him. And she kept staring at him like this, right to his face. And I'd look at him, and, and I'd preach, and I'd, I'd said something about getting right with the Lord, and he'd, he'd put his head down like this, like he's about to cry, and this girl would touch him and pull his arm and get a hold of his hand and try to get his attention. And that was God going to save that boy and take him to heaven. And the demons working through that teenage girl to stop him from hearing Folks, that's serious business. That's serious business. So you be real careful. You're not here to show how pretty you are this morning. That's probably a matter of opinion anyway. You're not here to show how many muscles you've got. What kind of car you drive. We're on level ground here this morning, friend. We're at the foot of the cross. And I said that because you goof off all week long. And it's hard to get serious when you're in the house of God. And I'm going to bring you a message this morning. It'll be brief, but it'll be just as serious as I can possibly be. I'm not, uh, I don't enjoy preaching on what I'm going to preach about this morning. No preacher does. I wish we didn't have to. It's awful to tell somebody and think about what we're going to think about this morning. But in Isaiah 14 and verse 9, you see a very serious, sobering thought from the Holy Bible. And that thought says in Isaiah 14, 9, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. He hath raised up their, from their thrones all the kings of the nations. That verse says that hell below 
is just waiting to swallow people up. And it's even moved to meet them at their coming to take them in. It had to go into a building program. It hath enlarged itself to to take care of the crowds that's coming there. I'm 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 talking this thing one hundred percent contrary to modern day science, education. The whole world system runs completely opposite of what I'm going to talk about this morning. That's something. I'll commit the unpardonable sin as far as seminaries are concerned and preach on hell on Sunday morning. Somebody said years ago, if we we had more preaching hell in the pulpit, we'd have less hell going on in the pews. I believe that. I'm preaching to you this morning on the subject, six surprises awaiting you in hell. Six surprises that are waiting in hell. Let's bow our heads while we pray. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us while we were yet unlovable in our sins. Allowed your Son to die on Calvary for us that we could have eternal life. Thank you for this, our dear brother and his wife that come to be with us and their family. Bless them. Bless these that are visiting. Our heart goes out this morning to that one or those here today who have been saved by your grace. Oh God, we realize and know that without that, they can never go to heaven. Help them this morning to see their need of a Savior. Anoint these lips of clay. Fill me with the Holy Spirit right now that I preach the Word of God. And we'll praise you and thank you and give you the glory for everything that's accomplished. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. The dictionary says that a surprise is something that happens suddenly or unexpectedly without warning. It says to catch unprepared or not ready. There are six surprises that are waiting on people in hell. There is no way this morning that you and I could describe hell. There's no way. No matter what we compare it to, it's a whole lot worse. No madman in his wildest flights of insanity could begin to imagine its horror. Nobody in delirium can picture a place so utterly terrible as hell. No nightmare racing through the fevered mind of a man could produce terror to the mildest part of hell. No murder scene with splashed blood and oozing wounds could describe and compare with the revulsion and and the the terrible sights that will even touch the border of what goes on in hell. No gifted writer can describe the roaring caverns, the flames, the fire, the smoke, the corners of the caves, the screams of the damned that were unpaired to meet God, who laughed at God in this life and hear the life of demons in the next. Nobody can describe it. That's why many people take hell as a joke. You mention hell nowadays, kids think you're cussing. It's become a joke. It's become a byword. It's become something that uh, people, you know, people are always out there telling each other to go to hell. And what they don't realize is that it is a real place with real fire, with real torment, with real suffering and real pain. There's a lot more to you accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior than you'll ever realize in this life. It's a lot more important than most people think it is. 
It's a lot more important to walk these aisles and bow and trust a Savior that died on Calvary 2,000 years ago than just a joke or it's something you decided to do or brother, it's a, you know, it's the thing that everybody's doing it and I believe I'll do it and something everybody does. It's a lot more important than that. If a man in this church died this morning, that has happened. If suddenly your heart stopped beating and you fell over dead in that seat there, if every one of us could uh, watch them as they take you to hell and go to the door. I was thinking about it the other night and I was about half asleep and half awake. And I was praying about this and thinking about preaching on this this morning. And I thought, my God, what would it be like if you could see that big, maybe an iron door open? And when that door opens, you hear a roar like a furnace. I want to tell you the first surprise that is waiting on people in hell this morning. First of all, some people will be surprised to find that hell exists. That's going to be the first surprise. They like to preach her. They made fun of the Bible. They said, no, I ain't going to that church. I ain't listening to no hellfire and damnation preacher. I don't like to hear preachers preach like that. Their first surprise is going to be to find that hell really is. They're going to be surprised to learn it is a real place. They thought it was just a state of mind. They thought it was just a figment of some preacher's imagination. They thought that some preachers had, had uh, concocted the idea of hell to scare people and to uh, push them into religious fanaticism and scare them into being faithful. They're going to be surprised to find out it's a place just like Marion. It's a place just like Asheville. It's a place just like Charlotte. It is a place. I picked up a guy one time hitchhiking. He told me, he said, if everything's going good here in this world and you got your bill paid and your family's happy and everything's, to, everything's together, that's heaven. But if everything's going bad and your bills ain't paid and you're having family problems and you're sick, you lose your job, you lose your health, that's hell. His first surprise will be to find that hell is a place. They've told themselves for years and years there was no such place. Don't you kid yourself. There's been thousands of grown men and hundreds of people right here in McDowell County that all of their lives have said there's no hell. There's no hell. There's no such place as that. God ain't going to let that happen to me. Their first surprise. You remember what I said surprise meant? Surprise is shock. Surprise is amazement. Surprise is, is a taken unawares that hell really does exist. Imagine being conscious, aware of what's going on around you. And brother, by chains or by some other uh, means, being lowered. And you find yourself lowering. And then you descend into hell. And you see fire burning all around you. You begin to hear screams. And for the first time ever, it dawns on you that hell's a real place. And you start saying, no, oh my God, this place is real. It's real. But that, that'll be the su surprise when they get there. They thought we just, uh, just it thought it up. Imagine Tom Paine. Imagine Voltaire. Imagine the atheists and the people here that have laughed at the Bible and laughed at the thought of hell and dying and to their surprise find out that it's really there. Their efforts to disprove was such a place are wasted. Their money, all of their reasoning, uh, their self-justification, it all goes out the window when they find themselves there. They'll begin to scream. They'll begin to curse God. They'll begin to say, it ain't right that I be here. I shouldn't be here. But there they are. And there's nothing you can do about it. Let me tell you something, friend. That's going to be a big surprise one day when they find out that it's really there. When these people that says, oh, I don't believe in that. You know, you're going to scare me with that hell stuff. What a shock you're going to have when you see it's fire. When you hear the scream. 
I can imagine well-known movie stars or athletes or musicians finding out that it really is there. And then secondly this morning, the second surprise that people will find in hell, some people will be surprised that they are there. Some people, not only will they be surprised hell exists, they'll be surprised that they wound up there. There's millions of people who believe there's a hell, believe there's a heaven, but they're really going to be shocked when it dawns on them that they wound up there. I remember before I got saved, when I was 15, 16, 17, I got license on my 16th birthday. I rode up and down these roads out here all over McDowell County for two years before I saved. I saved when I was 18. During that time, I was out here running around with a bunch of boys, getting in trouble, living like a devil, living in sin. And if during that time I had had a car wreck, I would have went to hell. And deep in my heart, I used to, I, I remember thinking, I remember thinking, well, that's probably going to happen to me. Uh, but surely God ain't going to let me die before I get right. Surely the Lord wouldn't. Now, to God's mercy, I had two years there and I did get saved. I did get right with the Lord. I don't have to worry about going to hell anymore. But I'll tell you something, friend. There's going to be a lot of people that think, yeah, good old God, you know. Uh, uh, he'll let me get right. I, I'm not going to wind up in hell. They think that their religion is, will prevent them from going there. There's people all over McDowell County this morning that deep inside, they don't think they're going to hell. They, they run down and join the church 15 years ago and their name's on some church book somewhere and they don't steal. They don't do their neighbor wrong. They try to pay their bills and they're going to be shocked one day when they find out they're in hell. They thought their church membership would save them. I read about an old preacher who grew up back in Texas when he was young. And he said when he was little, when it get Christmas time, all the community would kind of come together at Christmas. And at one of the neighborhood churches, they'd have a big Christmas tree. And everybody would buy each other gifts. You knew somebody in the community that you want to buy a gift, you'd just bring it. And they'd gather at one of the churches and on a night before Christmas, they would pass out those gifts. And he said the preacher, whoever was in charge, would pick up gifts one at a time. And he'd say, this one for so-and-so, this one for so-and-so. He said as a small boy, he stood there and he could not wait to see if his name was called. He said his daddy didn't have much and they didn't hardly get anything for Christmas. And he said he stood there, his heart pound pounding with almost unexplainable anticipation of waiting as to whether or not his name would be called. And so he would stand there. He said, maybe I'll get that that, that little pair of roller skates. Maybe that gun will be mine. Maybe that toy, uh, uh, toy truck or car. And boy, they would start giving out those gifts. And he said he would get down to the last one and his name would not be called. And he said his heart just hurt so bad. Little bitty kids, you know, looking at all them toys given out. And it hurt him so bad. And he said, pick up an orange or something. And said, now if any of you kids getting, didn't get nothing, here, I'll give this to you. He said that's only a small comparison of the grief and the anguish and the remorse that a sinner will find one day at the judgment when they stand there and the book of life is opened. And they'll say, surely God's going to call my name. Surely God's going to call my name. Surely my name's in the book. And their name won't be found in the book. Oh, how terrible that'll be. How, how, how horrible. That, how doomed, sinner, damned for all eternity will feel when God says, depart in the everlasting fire. Oh, my friends, they'll be surprised that they're there. They'll be surprised that moral people go to hell just like immoral people go to hell. Jesus meant what He said when He said, you must be born again. I'm not interested in how good you are this morning. I'm not interested in if you don't drink or you don't cuss or you don't steal anything or you ain't out committing uh, adultery or something. I'm asking you, have you ever been to Calvary have you ever been born again? Has Jesus Christ come into your life? If He hasn't, you, my friend, are on your way to hell. And you'll find out you'll be surprised when you wind up there. 
Bible said in Matthew 16, they'll come to the Lord in that day. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. They'll come and they'll say, Lord, they knew who He was. They knew who He was. They'll say, Lord, Lord, we went to church. Don't you remember me? I was a member of the church. I didn't think I was that bad. Oh, God. Oh, God. And the Lord will say, too late. Depart. I could have saved you down there, but you thought you didn't need it. I could have touched you that morning at New Man of Baptist Church, but you figured you was all right. I heard that story of that young fellow who was a carriage got away from these horses, were dragging him nearly to his death. And a young law student studying law. Somehow saw him. They were dragging him down through there. And so he ran over and got a hold of the horse's bridle and got him stopped and saved that young man's life. And of course, the young man was very thankful. Years and years and years went by. That same young man fell into sin, got in trouble with the law and had to go to court. He came up to stand before the judge and that lawyer had graduated on up and become a judge then. And he stood there that day and that judge began to sentence him to the penitentiary. That young man stood before the judge and he said, Judge, don't you remember me? He said, I'm, I'm the fellow. You remember down there when the horses were dragging me and met back then a long time ago and, and you got the horses stopped and you saved my life, Judge. Have mercy on me, surely. Let me just look back at him and said, Sorry, son. He said, I was your Savior then. Now I'm your judge. He said, I saved you then. Now I can't save you. I've got to judge you. Let me tell you who Jesus Christ is. He can be your Savior this morning. But one day, if you die without Him, He'll be your judge. There's a lot of people think, there's a lot of people in Marion think that they're going to get up out of the judgment bar and they're going to get down on their knees and they're going to say, now Lord, please, God, you're merciful. I've heard all my life that you was love. God, don't send me that fire. God, no. And the Lord will have no mercy. No mercy. Now the day of mercy's here. Today the door's open. That day it'll be too late. Third surprise. People are going to receive in hell. Some will be surprised at how fast they came there. They'll be surprised to find out they didn't have more time. Young people go to hell. Teenagers. Hey, there's teenagers in hell this morning that wasn't there last night. They're getting killed by the thousands on the highways and dying without God and going to hell. They'll be surprised at how fast they got there. I can imagine they'll scream and they'll say, wait a minute, this ain't fire. I was only 15. I was only 16. God, I, I didn't have a chance. God. And you're going to be surprised at how fast they got there. Proverbs 27, 1 said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for you don't know. They were driving home, been out with their friends. They'll be surprised that God didn't wait. They'll curse God. They'll blame Him. Because they got there so fast. Down in Texas, there's these two boys driving down the road. Listen to me now. And somebody tried to preach to them, tried to warn them that they, that they need to get saved. They kept on going down the road and just a little ways down the road had a car wreck. And they heard one of them screaming as he died, saying, Oh God. They'll be surprised at how fast they went to hell. Fourthly, this morning, the fourth surprise a lot of people are going to have when they get to hell, some people's going to be surprised at who they find in hell. They'll be the presence of the wicked of all ages, ancient figures. They've heard of. Imagine the people of Noah's day. And when you get to hell, not beginning to see those people that were in the days before the flood. 
And they're there and they're screaming and, and many of them are still screaming that Noah will help them. Imagine the days of Lot and the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, a picture of modern day America. If you want to make, read America's history, read Genesis chapter 6 and 7 and Genesis chapter 19. America, and I, just been to Mississippi, I come back through uh, Birmingham, through Atlanta, through uh, uh, Meridian, Mississippi, and up through Tuscaloosa, and across Alabama. I, I took my, uh, got me a CB antenna in case we had uh, trouble or something. Like that. Man, you turn on that CB and you find out what kind of Sodom and Gomorrah we're living in. Our Lord, I begin to hear, it's just like in the days of Lot. You'll see those people there. Hey, what's it going to take for God to wake people up? What's it going to take? You know what's going to happen? God's going to let people just go right on and right on and right on, just do what they want to, and then cut them off. And that without remedy. Bible said, listen, let me tell you something this morning as a warning, friend. The Bible said if you've been told and 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 yet you harden your neck and say, I ain't going to listen. I'm not going to do what that preacher says. He ain't going to talk me of that. God's going to cut you off real quick. You ain't going to have no slow death. Give you time to get right. The Lord just going to whack you off. Friends will be there. Relatives will be there. Acquaintances. I, I've been, I was the other day about all the people that I went to school with that have died. That's healthy as I was in school. And they're dead now. They're dead. They're gone. Number five. Some will be surprised at the torments awaiting in hell. They're going to find out the flames were real. My little girl over here, while I was gone this week, over at my mother-in-law's, put her hand on the wood stove. I guess every kid does that one time or another. I remember one time I come running through the house. We had an oil stove back growing up. And I came running through the house one day and just laid my hand down on it. And the dumbest thing I... I don't ask me why, i just done it. And what it is, they, a lot of them have been used to doing it all summer, you know, why it's cooking. Then when you first start heating it up, they forget. And boy, she's showing me this morning. She's pointing at it and say, I cry for mommy. And big old burnt place there. Big old burnt place there. Thought shot through my mind. Hey, put your hand on the stove, brother. Turn your eye on. Get them things red hot. Put your hand on there if you want to see what hell feels like. We kind of air conditioned it nowadays. Oh, yeah, everybody's going to hell. Big deal. They're going to party like it's 1999, you know. We're going, to, uh, we're going to get down there and live it up, man. Play guitars and smoke pot and all we're going to have. No, man. No, 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 no. It's more horrible. No joke. Blistering hot. Hear the roar, the blackness, the separation. Death, who's a monster on this earth, would be a welcome angel in that place. They'll be surprised that God would really permit this. People have the idea that let me, let me put to rest some other fables right here right quickly. But these days, there's a big teaching going around that hell for you will be whatever bothers you. If you don't like country music, they're going to take you down there and put you in a room and play country music 24 hours a day, blasting in your ears. Yeah, don't you wish, brother. Now, I'll admit some of it's awful nauseating to listen to. That'd be a welcome sight. That'd be a welcome sight. In hell, that ain't hell. His man told me, I asked the man one time, I said, uh, you're saved? He said, no, I said, you don't want to go to hell, do you? He said, man, I'm in hell. I said, oh, he said, yeah. I said, well, no, you ain't. You can get a drink of water. I don't care how bad it is here. You can go back up and get you some water. 
torments. The seventh surprise that people will find in hell. Or sixth, I'm sorry, and this is the last one. Some people will be surprised to find out that God lets that torment continue. It's eternal. This is the shocker. This is the worst one. It's more horrible than anything we can imagine. It's, it's more painful than anything you can think of. Brother Danny, why, why does God do that? Listen, God don't want you to go. See, the world's lost. He sent His Son down here and bled and died to save you and forgive you. You don't have to go to hell. All you got to do is just come and take Christ as your Savior, put your trust in Him, and you don't have to go. The reason you go to hell is because you choose to go there. You make up your mind, that's where you're going. You say, ain't nobody going to make cram religion down my throat. I'll do as I please. Yeah, you will. Eternal punishment is the eternal payment that you pay for committing a sin against an eternal God. In all honesty to you this morning, in all sincerity, the thing that burdens me and hurts me the worst about preaching on hell is I can never tell people that one day it'll be over with. Please listen to me, folks. Please listen. You ain't never going to get up! The thing that used to bother me so much before I got saved, I knew I was going to hell. I remember distinctly growing up, and I said if I died, I'd go to hell. But I talked myself into believing that if it did, that my punishment would be over at a certain amount of time, and then I would cease to exist, and I'd just be annihilated and be unconscious and it wouldn't be eternal torment. I used to say that that just I just can't I just can't swallow that. And I tried my whole life to talk myself into the to the believing that if I went to hell it'd be over with quick. But it's not. Oh I've heard people say, Well you take a piece of paper here and set it on fire. It burns up, don't it? Yeah. What's that got to do with hell? If God can give a Christian an eternal body that will never age and never grow old in heaven, He can give a lost man an eternal soul and a body that will never burn up. And He can do it and He will do it. He is doing it right now. They find out the Bible says it's true. This will be the worst part. You never get out. After the joys of earth. After living here. Hey, hey, man, you talk about an insane asylum. You think about driving up and down the road past this church for 20 years or 10 years and and brother seeing church services, seeing Bibles laying around the house and then die and go to hell and say, oh, Lord, no, God, no, no, God. And trying to tell yourself it'll be over in in a few hours. But it don't quit. Hallelujah, I'm glad I got in. Amen. Glory to God. Boy, you may sit there and dry up on God. You may sit there and say, well, I just don't get much out of church no more. But you have forgotten something, brother. You're not going to hell if you're saved. My soul. Well, man, that, that's something. Thank God I'll never be able to repay my Savior for redeeming my soul. Hell fire. I ain't going to be surprised when I get there because I ain't a-going. Boy, these people in McDowell County, they've told everything in the world on me. You know what that does? That don't bother me a bit, man. I got it settled. I'm in! Woo! I don't have to go to hell. If you go, it's your fault. You can go to heaven with me just as easy as I can go. I was thinking about this. And something hit me in the bed last night. Some of the best thoughts hit me when I'm about half asleep and half awake. And I come a higher for getting it this morning because I believe the Lord wanted me to get up and write it down and I was too sorry to do it. When the Lord gives you something like that, you just get up and write it down. 
The devil come and steal it out of your heart, but you can't eat that paper in there on your desk. And I thought of this. I don't even believe I've ever heard a preacher preach on it. Probably has. Probably not original, but I thought about something. You know what one of the worst things about being in hell will be? Now, the devil is a liar, right? He's the father of lies. He, he's, he started lying. Everything the devil tells is either a flat-out lie or it's a partial truth with lie wrapped around it, you know, to hide the lie with truth wrapped around it a little bit. Everything. The devil cannot tell the straight, flat-out truth. He always wraps it up in a partial lie. Now, the devil been telling people all these years, you're not going to hell. You're not going to, you're not going to go to hell. Don't listen to it. You're not going to go to hell. You'll be all right. Take it easy. All right. Finally, they die and they do go. Now, if, if, there's, if there's demons and creatures that roam the halls of hell, I, I'd say, I don't see why that lion would stop when a person dies. This is what hit me in the bed last night. I believe... That a person's there. Now, you think about suffering for an hour. You just got to hell. Fire begins to burn your body. Your, you smell it. It's in your nose, in your eyes, in your ear. It's, it's black, but every once in a while you see a flame shoot up like that and you see some old burnt faces. And you hear the awfulest screaming you ever heard in your life. Like a murder nightmare horror show coming real 3D brother to life. And all of a sudden, listen, look at me now. You hear a voice. And you say, Oh, oh God, it's true! It's true! I can't stand it! And there's a little voice comes along and said, It'll be over with in a few minutes. It's all right. It'll quit in just a few minutes. You say, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I always hoped that it wouldn't be eternal. I thought teachers was wrong. I'll burn up here. I'll die in a few minutes. I'll die. And then it just keeps on and on and, and somehow another time goes by. And, and you start saying, and you start saying, it'll, oh God, oh God, let me go ahead and die. And there's a little demon by and said, well, it'll quit in a few minutes. Don't worry. They all die after a while. You'll be dead in a little bit. They're lying to you. And you lay in there saying, Oh boy, oh boy, I'll be glad when it's over. And you keep expecting it and expecting to die, and you can't die. Man, you talk about awful. My soul, you talk about horrible. A million years, you'd still be alive. Them demons will still come by. You're all going to die pretty soon. Your torments will be over. Don't worry. They've been telling you that for a thousand years. Lies don't stop after you pass the grave. They'll tell you, God's just going to let it burn the life in Him and then you're all going to get out and He's going to forgive you and everything's going to be alright. But they're prophets of hell. They're lying. My Lord, my soul, how horrible that'd be. I heard about old Archibald Boyle who was an infidel that lived years ago, back in the 1800s. And I tell you this story as I close. They had a club called the Hell Club. And Archibald Boyle was the meanest one. He had a reputation for uh, being able to cause more trouble, and stir up a stink, and have more women, and do wilder things than any of them. One night... While he was dreaming, Archibald Boyle dreamed he died and went to hell. And he dreamed he went down there and the flames were around him and the demons were screaming. Boy, he was scared, man. He was horrified. And he said that in his dream, that demon brought him back up here, you know, as he was waking up and said, All right, we're going to take you back now. But in a year and a day, we'll meet again to part no more. Oh, that haunted him. He stayed in his house. He wouldn't go outside. All he could do is sit and worry. Those words haunted him. 
in a year and a day, in a year and a day, we'll meet to part no more. They said, Archibald, he said, he, he, he just let himself go and he wouldn't go out and do nothing. And finally, the members of the, of the gang talked him into coming back and he started going back to the hell club and started visiting it regularly and raising Cain, you know, and living like a devil again. He finally got over the rain. And at their next annual meeting, they were all sitting there, pres and the president got up to make a speech. He said, it's good to see all of you here this evening. He said, this is leap year. It's been a year and a day since we last met. Boy, when he said that, they said, every, every muscle of his body just tightened up. A fear shot through him. That hot feeling, you know, when you get real scared, it just went through him and he was sitting there numb. But he laughed it off and the meeting was over and they all went their separate ways. Next morning, they found Archibald Bull's horse out there grazing on, in the pasture and on the hillside somewhere, taking it easy. And his stiff carcass, a few yards away, laying. That strange visitor that came to him in the dream that night come. And they met again to part no more. When they find out what the Bible says is true after all, what a surprise, what a surprise. After the joys of earth, after its song of mirth, after an empty name, after this weary frame, what then? What then? What are you going to do when you die? Oh, then the judgment throne, then all the well, woes that dwell, just hope gone in an eternal hell. Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed and every eye closed. You don't have to go to hell this morning. Hey, Dad. Mom. Young lady. Teenager. Boy, girl, you don't have to go to hell. While Christians are bowing their head, closing their eyes and praying. Please. Don't walk out that door this morning if you don't know you're saved. Dear Lord, do what needs to be done right now. I pray in Jesus' name. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed and Christians are praying, I wonder this morning, while no one's looking around, God's dealt with your heart. If you just get up out of your seat right now, come down here to this altar get saved this morning you want to go to heaven when you die just come down here and let's pray or you step out come on down here meet us at the front get out of your seat right now come on get up out of your seat right now don't worry about people looking people praying they're bowing their head they're praying right now just get out of your seat and come right now if you're with someone, they'll come with you. They'll pray with you. Don't walk out without the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, don't do it. It'll be too late one day. If you're here this morning, you don't know that you're to heaven. And I know there's some that are not sure. You've told me by your own testimony, some of you, that you're not right with God. gonna pray stand sing just as I am without one plea this may be the most important few minutes of your whole life you can do something this morning that'll settle it for eternity you can come to Calvary and get saved you don't ever have to worry about going to will you do it dear Lord please oh God please bring Holy Ghost conviction right now 
God help that man, that woman, that boy, that girl who's near the edge of eternity. Step out and make that thing right today. Just get out of your seat. Come, Come on right now. Come on to Jesus. Come on, get it settled this morning. Don't wait. Don't wait. One of these days it'll be too late. Come on. Come on right now. Hey, His blood was shed for you, friend. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. Keep you out of hell. Amen. Some of you men come and pray. God wants to do a work in your heart. Come in, boys. Jesus this morning. Come on to Calvary. When these days will be too late. Don't you leave here lost without God. Yes, amen. Amen, ladies, help us now. Maybe God's dealing with your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come pray with us, folks, y'all. Amen. 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 Come talk to these folks. You men, help us now. Amen. Come on. Let God do something in your life this morning. Hey, nobody don't have to go to hell. Nobody don't have to go to hell. The door is open. The door is open. Flee from the wrath of God. Flee from the judgment to come. Your time is running out. Amen. I always say, come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on right now. Come on to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, that's right. Lord, give him a good dose. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Whosoever will, let him come. While the door of mercy is open. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody pull this young man coming here. Amen. Saved. It's gonna be too late one day. Glory to God. Amen. 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 My soul dark Amen. Yes, thank God. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. the best opportunity you'll ever have to get saved. If you don't know you're saved this morning, why don't you just come on down here and get it settled? Good night. What are you waiting on? I wouldn't take a change like that. Don't take that change. Don't worry about somebody looking at you or what somebody's going to say. Man, this is, this is eternal business. We're dealing with God in heaven and hell. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're not too young or too old. Make sure you're right with God. Hey, buddy, you'll be faced with death one day. I believe God's dealt with some more in here. I was praying this morning and last night, 15. There's about 15 people in here need to get right with God. 
We probably had four or five more. There's probably about ten more in these pews this morning. You don't know if you'd go to heaven or hell if you die. You don't even know. You stand there this morning. You don't even know where you're going. I'll tell you what we're going to do. There's at least ten more people in this room. The Lord put that figure on my heart right. I've been praying for 15. I said, Lord, let 15 get saved. Say 15. There's a bunch more. Now, if you stand back there this morning and say, well, I believe I'll wait till some other time. That some other time may never come. You'll never have a better chance. Sing another verse, Brother John, while we sing. Why don't you come right now? Come on, come on, come on. Just get come on, come on right now. It's the only hope you got, sir. It's the only hope you got, ma'am. Young man, teenager, come on right now. Come on, come on, come on right now. Just get out of your seat, cup. Young people, come to Jesus. The door is still open for you. We give you an opportunity to come. We're singing another verse. We're singing another. Come on. Come on. Right now, this is your chance. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on right now. This is your chance. This is your chance. This is your chance. Will you come? Will you come? Amen. Amen. Would you come? Would you come? It'll be too late one of these days. Would you come now? Would you come? Hey, Amen. Hey, it'll be too late someday. The door's open this morning. That's right. Some others are coming. Let God get a hold of you this morning. Have you ladies help us now? Get it settled. Get it settled between you and God. Don't leave here without Jesus. Sing another. Always sing, won't you come? too late. It'll be too late. You'll be surprised at how you went to hell. To thee whose blood can cleanse each Come on. Come on. How about it, Dad? How about it, Mom? God, I come. I these are praying the Lord in this, in this invitation this morning there's some people getting some things settled don't leave till you know you'll wind up being surprised one day you'll wind up being surprised pray. Is there anybody else? We'll wait just about 15 seconds. We're going to pray. Anybody else? Is there anybody else? Need to come. Come on right now. Come right now. We're going to pray. Anyone else? Amen. Get it settled now. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? God, we ask in Jesus' name that you'd move right now. Help these that's on the altar to get it settled. Help them know beyond a shadow of a doubt they're in. Hallelujah. Thank you for answering prayer. Lord, I know there's probably some here this morning that's resisted you. Lord, you've dealt with them. You've drawn them. They said no. They've chosen the way of sin. 
Oh God, continue to deal with them. Break that stony heart. Don't let them be able to rest till they get right with you. Thank you for what you've done. We praise you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think there's still some praying will not bother them. You they're supposed to join the church. Come on up here right quick. The ones that we have talked to that are going to join the church this morning. If you prayed with somebody who got saved this morning, I want to know it. Somebody got saved. Got saved this morning. If you prayed with somebody and they got saved, raise your hand. Okay, one, two, five, man, three. I think there's some over here. Three, four. Amen. That's about three or four got saved this morning. Amen. And I want you to, you folks that got saved this morning, I want you to stay just a minute after we dismiss. After we dismiss, we want you to stay just a moment. I want to talk to you just a moment. The ones that got saved, if you can pray with them, bring them up here at the front, and we're going to let you go. Uh, okay. Amen. Uh, the Ramseys were missing one. Tim couldn't be here today. Uh, this are the Miss Ramsey and her daughters, and this is Olivia uh, Flynn, and uh, they're wanting to join the church this morning. I've talked to them. I was supposed to have done it last Sunday morning. And I just praise the Lord for this family. They've really been a blessing to us. And I've, I've used them for an example before because uh, these folks right here drive all the way from, is it Banner Elk? From Banner Elk every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night to come to church. They've been doing that a long time. That's a blessing, you know what? That's a blessing. If you live within uh, rock throwing distance, that ought to really make you feel bad. And uh, the, all the way from Banner Elk, down that mountain, time they get home this evening and have lunch, it'll be time to head back. And they, they, they said, this is where God put them. And I believe that. I agree with it, don't you? Amen. Amen. We appreciate Sister Ramsey and her family. And Tim couldn't be here. We'll get him next week. Uh, Emily, Donna. And these girls, I'll, we'll just take all three of them at one time. So I'm going to make a motion. Second, all in favor, let me know an uplifted hand. Praise the Lord. All right, this is Olivia Flynn. And uh, she didn't get to join, I think, when her mother did or something. She wanted to join the church too. And someone want to make the motion her. Second, all in favor, that let me know an uplifted hand. Praise the Lord. We've got uh, some other folks that are wanting to join next Sunday. And, uh, oh, by the way, we're not going to have the dinner for Brother Dale. They had a previous appointment. We forgot about it. Got a verse cross. So any of you were prepared to stay, we're not going to have it. And uh, I was thinking, uh, I praise the Lord for sending these folks in. Uh, we had one family leave, and there comes another. And that's the way it always works, except for probably about four, the way it usually happens. But we praise God for that. It's His church. He knows how to build it. And we want you to come and make these folks welcome, give them the right hand of fellowship in the, in the church family. And uh, you that got saved, don't you all come over here at these steps here. Just a minute, just a minute before you leave. I'd like to talk to you just a second, okay? All right. Sister's going to play something. They're going to play something for us on the instruments. You come around and shake these folks' hand. Welcome into the service. Praise the Lord. And be here tonight. Bring somebody with you.